working? I hope so. I don't want to get the other mic. Anyways, hello everyone. Uh, my name's Audrey. My pronouns are they, them. And today I'm going to share some lessons I learned while working on Slack Enterprise Key Management. This was my first quote unquote staff plus project, meaning uh, I went from senior to staff while I was working on it. And while this happened quite a few years ago, um, I think about this project a lot because the lessons that I learned here and that I'll be sharing are ones that I still continue to use and think about as I grow in my career. So first, a quick disclaimer. Um, as you probably heard during the intro, I no longer work at Slack. Um, however, some of the technical details that I'll be sharing and you know be going over are still pretty accurate. So what is Slack Enterprise Key Management? Um, this was a feature that was built for companies that were in highly regulated markets. So think about financial services, healthcare, government. And what they wanted was a way to be able to control their more sensitive data. So think about messages and files and things like that. And so what Slack did is that we integrated with Amazon KMS, which is a key management service. So customers could put their key in there, and then Slack could request access to say, do we have permission to use these keys so we can decrypt or encrypt your sensitive data? Um, and in that way, admins could set up policies in AWS um, that would allow granular access to their channels, messages, files, and whatnot. So more concretely, uh, this is what a baseline policy would look like. Uh, you have here like allow access to use these two APIs, decrypt and generate data key uh, for a particular enterprise, which is that is the enterprise ID. So in a case where they wanted to say deny Slack's access to a particular channel, they would change a policy that would look something like this to something that would look like this. So you know deny for a particular organization and a channel. Okay. So once that would happen, I'm sure some of you are on Slack now, you would see you know, the normal thing, but if they have a deny policy, this is what Slack would look like. You would say, hey, you can't see these messages or files because access has been denied. Okay, so you all are now EKM experts, or at least have a better idea of what the end user uh, functionality is like. Uh, so let's start getting into these lessons. So when I was first kind of presented with EKM, um, I was talking to one of the directors in my organization, and we were like, OK, let's have a brainstorm session and kind of figure out what a high-level architecture could look like. And this is basically what we came up with, right? We have a smiley face, which is actually some sort of client, um, talking to the Slack web app, which is the back end, you know, which talks to the database, which talks to the EKM service on Slack side, and that connected to AWS KMS on the customer's AWS account. So the first lesson I learned during this process is prototyping is your friend, especially when you're fundamentally changing how your product, or your company's product works. And in my case, I didn't really know how message sending worked. So, so prototyping was able to help me sort of start exploring the corners of the problem, get a better sense of all right, what actually needs to be built. It helped reduce the unknown unknowns. And then finally, it helped me improve estimations as I brought on new other engineers and as I was talking to leaders about when and if we were actually going to be able to ship on time. So for going back to that like high level overview, everything in the red circle, I was like, OK, I'm going to try to prototype this and see, can I actually get Slack to talk to VKM service and then set a policy such that I can show that we can revoke access? Uh, thankfully, the answer is yes. However, this is a little bit more of what the architecture ended up looking like. Yeah, slightly more complicated, right? Um, so we have multiple clients, that we, multiple clients that we had to worry about. We had to think about how search would work. We had to think about backfills. So you know, think about customers that turn on Ecamm one day and all their previous messages and files, they need to be encrypted. We wanted to make sure that things were fast, so we had to think about caching. And then lastly, you know, while customers were like, yeah, it looks like our keys are being used, they wanted the ability to be able to see in some sort of log, immutable log, that is, that, hey, Slack is actually doing what they said we're doing, so we had CloudWatch there as well. So while this architecture is you know, a little complicated, don't worry, I did not do this all by myself. So that leads me to my second lesson, which is share your Legos. And you know, while it was helpful for me in the beginning to be a little selfish and like prototype everything, kind of figure out how things fit together, in order to deliver a quality product to our customers, I was going to need a little bit of help. So the, what I ended up doing was working with a bunch of different tech leads and, and different parts of the organization. And this helped me get the opportunity to grow other engineers and help give them the opportunity to showcase off their skills and you know, get their promotions and whatnot. Secondly, it also helped me improve my project management skills. You know, I'm meeting with all these tech leads on some sort of regular cadence. Um, I was, you know, ensuring that the specs were looking good, specs were looking good, and then also working with them to set up reasonable milestones so we, you know, would hit our deadlines and whatnot. 
And then lastly, you know, sharing all my Legos gave me the opportunity to kind of focus a bit more on things that absolutely had to be done by me. And so going back to that like high level overview, this is a little bit of like how the breakdown went. You know, we had uh, tech leads for the various clients, I had tech leads that were more focused on search, and then there were also tech leads that were focused on the backfill. So the rest of it, you know, I could focus on, but it was mostly working and got the flow working on pretty pretty well. Um, but having other folks focus in those areas gave me a chance to, you know, jump in if they needed help to get things over the line. But I mostly was able to focus on performance improvements and then also start understanding why our KMS bill was so darn high. All right. So jump into the third lesson, which is uh, repeat autom or automate repeated task. And so you know, in this case, I really found that computers could have been much more my friend than I was allowing them to be at the time. You know, a big challenge of this project was that while we were building EKM, you know, focusing on messages and files and ensuring that everything was properly encrypted, there were other people that were building features at the same time that customers would deem as like sensitive data. So we needed to make sure they were encrypted. And so, you know, the, the repeated task here was having engineers across the organization constantly have to implement an interface to say, okay, your feature needs EKM, you have to implement this e interface, and over and over again. So for example, this, um, this would have helped us, like, kind of, if I had more automation here, it would have helped kind of backstop box, back some process failures in the sense of, like, hey, if anyone forgot that, you know, EKM was needed for a certain feature, you know, we would have a little bit of a problem with our customers. You know, it would have helped with adoption, you know, for engineers, like ensuring that we didn't impact the roadmap too much when they had to go implement it. And then lastly, it would also help implement, ensure that we had correctness. Like it was really important to ensure that we're using the appropriate keys and, and encrypting the appropriate data as well. So uh, you probably know this is like some really serious pseudocode here. For, for those that don't know, uh, hack, uh, hack, uh, Slack is actually written Hack, which is you know PHP's cousin, and this is Go, so obviously very fake. Um, but the thing that I think about a lot is you know instead of having everyone implement these interfaces over and over again, what if there was a way to automatically generate this? Because we had a general idea of what the shape of the output should be, and you know what the inputs were. So could we have done that? And then also, is there a way that we could have used the data store a bit more to kind of leverage that in order to handle a lot more of the encryption? So, um, you know, while we did this and it was able to get a shift in time, this kind of leads me to the next lesson, which is don't over-engineer. You know, just because you can build it does not necessarily mean you should, because you might miss some customer use cases. There are times when you're like, oh, this is so cool, but it's not actually what the customer needed. Um, with that, it could impact your architecture. And then lastly, that could lead to increased cost overall. So let's kind of walk through a sample flow of where this uh, manifested. So let's say you're in an ECAM organization. Uh, uh, you want to be able to read some files. So you're here on your client, and you go and you send a mess. You're, you're trying to read your message. So it goes to the Slack backend, which then goes, grabs the cipher text from the database, which then goes, talks to the ECAM service. And then in the happy path case, we actually have the key in this wonderful little cache. So we go grab it, and we can immediately, you know, render the file and everything's great. However, in the case where the key is not in the cache because the TTL is only five minutes, we would end up having to go to KMS. And every time we make a call to KMS, that is going to cost money. Good for them, not so great for us. So imagine there was uh, a really large organization, so think like tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people, and everyone is constantly sharing, reading, sharing, creating, and you know, looking at all these files. You know, in the case where these, ki these keys are no longer in the cache, we constantly had to go to KMS and say, all right, let's go you know, get these keys. However, one thing that we were looking at when we were looking at this very expensive KMS bill was, were customers actually needing to revoke access to individual files all the time, especially when there was another Slack feature that could have done exactly the same thing? Just, you know, just to say that we had a really close relationship with KMS just to kind of work through a lot of these things, but it was a thing that you know, I constantly thought about. So it leads me to my next lesson, my last one, which is know your audience. You know, your audience will vary, and like, so are their interests. It's really, I found it like, as I was growing in from a senior engineer to a staff plus engineer that it was really important for me to understand was who was in the room and then share the information based on that appropriate context. 
And so like in a single day, I would go from talking to the CTO about you know, how we're gonna release, release EKM um, at scale, uh, then I would go talk to the KMS engineers to say, very sorry, we're gonna figure out how to improve our performance, we stop hammering you all. Uh, and then I'd do a demo to a prospective customer who was really concerned with, is EKM gonna slow down what the Slack experience will be? And then finally, I could go talk to internal engineers or at conferences to share all this idea. So while I had to learn a bit as I was becoming a staff engineer initially, um, you know, knowing the audience and crafting a message is something that I still work on today. So to recap real quick, the lessons are prototyping is your friend, share your Legos, automate repeated tasks, don't over-engineer, and know your audience. Uh, thank you for listening. If you have any questions, come to the office hours. And, yeah. Thanks. <laughs>